Hello, everybody, and welcome to Organic Politics for the week of the 23rd of April, 2013, the day after Earth Day, a week after the marathon bombings. And uh, please welcome uh, my co-host, singer-songwriter, freedom fighter, Kathleen Sims, and our Sister. mascot of the week. Angel, thank you. Thank you, viewers, for being out there. Somebody's always calling us, so we have uh, somebody who's calling us at the moment, but we will um, get back to them later. There you go. So uh, today we went back to the uh, Mike the Barber, and we uh, want to share that interview that we had, and uh, uh, so may we roll that please, Mike? Hello everybody, thank you for viewing us. This is Emily Payton, and I'm Kathleen Sims, and we are organic politics. And we are here at uh, Mike Eldridge's shop, whom we featured in our last show, and we're to talk with him about the fact that the Vermont Secretary of State is squishing him under their thumb, uh, making doing business absolutely impossible in an economically depraved place. So uh, let's go in and, and follow up with him after last show. Let's go talk show. to this man and see what's going on. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. May we come in? You certainly may come in, yes. Thank you. Um, Mike, Emily. Hi, Emily. Kathleen. Hi, Kathleen. Uh, are you allowed to do business right now? No. I've been closed since May 17th. Uh, say again? I've been closed since May 17th. Oh my, oh my goodness. I was supposed to uh, have a shop license, which I had never heard of. And Mrs. White, the inspector, was right here, and I said, a shop license I do not have. She says, then you are closed. I said, closed? Really? Yes. I said, well, just a minute. Could I have the number to the Secretary of State? to Condon, I believe it. Anyways, I called over there, and I got hold of someone, and I said, I'm being inspected now by a state inspector, Mrs. White, and she says that I need a shop license. Right, right, there was no, like, time to get ca no, caught up and get no. yours? There was no negotiating? Oh, now, close right now. Yeah, yeah. So she gave me the number, I called up. I said, I've been barbering here for over 30 years. I said, I bought the shop from a fellow named John Holler. His, the shop's name was Holler's Barbershop in 1983. And I said, would you please tell me what Johnny Holler's Barbershop license number was? Because I never remember him having one when I was working with him. They so said, give me a minute and please make come back. We have no record of a Holler's Barbershop in Bellas Falls. Oh my goodness, so, so how you been, you have the heat on here and you can't have any customers and you, 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 you therefore you can't pay the bill. So uh, Kathleen and I have uh, uh, an idea that we'd like to see if you're willing to do. Kathleen, you wanna describe what we were thinking? Well, we were trying to come up with a solution to the fact that, you know, your livelihood has just been taken from you and we're witness to it. So. And by being witness to it, I want to be a part of the solution. And perhaps this could be a slight way to get people to help you understand where you're at and change it and let you work inside. But we'd like to ask if we could have a slight haircut outside and, and give you a gift for your time, because we know you can't cut in here. But I'll get my shears right now, you mean? Yeah, really? right now. Yeah. Excellent. And this is perfect since I have a permanently bad hair day. <laughs> that that uh, will work well. Okay, uh, let's see. Where's the gift that we have? And this is an idea that we want to uh, say it could be a solution for a lot. A lot of gifting. We could turn into a gift economy. And so, and so we're going to reverse this and give the gift first and say thank you. 
Thank you so much. And, and try to get a little of the hair out of her eyes for us. <laughs> and, and just a little. Oh, oh that's wow. it. That's perfect. Now, this man is reduced to being on the street in order to steal work, which he's very able. Can you get just a, just a little right there? Oh, yeah. Uh, you see that? No, no, oh, no, 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 no. Right there. Right there. Let's get right there. Oh, yeah, okay. You know, her husband will notice all this. Oh, that is so nice. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You want to take the sample? I want you to yeah. That's right. Excellent. And I'll take the hair. Gifting is a marvelous solution because if you think about it, nobody has to accept a gift, nobody has to give a gift, and sometimes you have to do things to get a gift. It's actually a, a system that is has a lot of checks and balances, probably even more. Meanwhile, I would like to just, I've got a mic on. Okay. I would just like to mention that he can't pay his, you know, his bills at home with just, you know, any kind of gift. It's great to have a few gifts, but he needs money gifts. Yeah. He needs to be able to work for money that he's been trained for your entire life, sir. Yes. And we do hope that you get your license, whatever that well, is, actually, or that they understand that you've already been working. Don't you pay taxes? Yes, I certainly do. See? Yeah, yeah. I thought that was a license. Yeah, I think, I think actually that they should be punitized and they should uh, dock somebody's pay and return him the value of for, two months of, of loss plus pain and anguish without even having... Down. That's what I think. I think we should turn the tables because it's ridiculous how these people are taking money that they set their own salaries from the people making life miserable for the people who are being representative. And I'm certain this man is the same age. You're the same age around my mother's age. You're over 50, 63, right? Yes. Yes. And working hard still for a living. Yes, but what I don't understand is this is a democracy, and I thought these people over here are supposed to represent us and help us. It's and a dictatorship when they say, you close right now. That's right. No we matter. don't give you a chance to explain yourself why you don't have a license. There's no reason. I still didn't find out till just last Monday what a shop license was or how much it even cost. Yep. And they claimed that they sent it to me with my barber license when I was doing my barber license. And I hate to call anybody a liar, but if that was in with my barber license, when I sent for my barber license, I would have sent for the shop license at the same time. That's right. So they can't prove to me they sent me any kind of thing. Right, right. Well, um, I uh, hate to point it out, but we uh, may be needing to do a lot more gifting in the very near future, so I encourage and, everybody to and, and get should, used to it. And you should remember, if you've got the ability to gift well, gift well. You've worked hard for a living. Thank you, sir, for Thank your you. time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Yes. <laughs> well, yes. Kathleen, did you have something to add? Yeah, everybody gift well. I want to re-emphasize uh, the fact that uh, now that you guys have seen the situation, um, let's brainstorm on this. And the best I can come up with is, is perhaps sending Mr. Mike um, a little bit of uh, gift in the mail for his uh, you know, livelihood and ability to maintain himself. And that's Mike's Barbershop in Bellows Falls, Vermont, if you want to send him something. Um, I also want to repeat something that he said to us, which is that he is not the only barbershop uh, that's being targeted this way and shut down. Uh, apparently, there are numbers of, of these, uh, these things happening. So, uh, and in silence, you know, there's this thing that's happening because you know mainstream doesn't know it my neighbors don't know it you're not going to pick up this information on your average television mm -hmm. station mm -hmm. um, I, uh, it's nice to be a part of a grassroots um, um, solution solution yeah. uh, if you can come up with a better idea for this man let us know shoot us an email or something down here. Yeah, uh, I think it's interesting that he used the, the word uh, dictatorship and we're just a week out from the uh, Boston bombings and what we saw was that they shut down the entire city of Boston for numbers of days, I think it was three days. And I believe it's the second time of martial law in Boston. Yeah, and, and here we have uh, the people who uh, work uh, hand to mouth who, have, who count on their paycheck uh, getting docked three days out of five days work or, or more 
And there's no talk in this of compensation for their hours. Um, there's, this will undoubtedly send a lot of people over the edge, lots of people over the edge in Boston who were just making ends meet. Now they don't have enough for their medication. Now they don't have enough to get the gas in their car to get to work because... But we're safe. Lockdown is because they feel that we're in danger of the terrorist, and uh, I believe that that is the reasoning behind such extreme measures. So. Yeah. Well, at any rate, let's uh, let's uh, meet our mascot of the week up and close. Uh, this is, this is Angel. An angel. And Angel is our mascot of the week. Yes. Angel's uh, my 13-year-old puppy. We've been best friends since she was about four months old. And, uh, and I wanted to bring in uh, some other um, creatures other than people because uh, this is organic politics. And even though we do a lot of talking, uh, we, we want to remind our viewers that we are involved with all kinds of other beings in, in in so many different levels. So uh, we want to bring them into the show. We hope to bring a different mascot each week. And Angel is our very first. Uh, she provides a, a reminder of joy almost constantly. Um, and for that, we are very thankful for her. Thank you for having us. Um, may I uh, roll another clip? And this is a clip um, that is, uh, was made by somebody named Larkin Rose, and I came across him, and he's got a two-minute segment where he describes the whole problem and the solution. And I thought it would be uh, a good clip to roll and to discuss afterwards. So um, may we please roll that? asked me if there's anywhere they can go for a brief, concise synopsis of my main point of what I talk about, or the main point of my book, The Most Dangerous Superstition. And I couldn't think of a place, so this is it. Here is the main problem with the world and the solution in two minutes. Gonna have to listen fast. Ready, go. Most conflict, violence, and injustice is the result not of individual malice, but of people imagining an obligation to obey a perceived authority, usually government. In their daily lives, most people accept the non-aggression principle. It's not okay to rob or attack other people. But they've been taught that government has an exemption from that rule, and that legalized theft and thuggery, taxation and law enforcement, are moral, legitimate, and necessary for society. Here are three independent proofs that the concept of government is not just susceptible to corruption and abuse, but is, by its very nature, self-contradictory and insane. Number one, there is no document or procedure whereby any person or group of people can delegate to another a right which the first person or group didn't have to begin with. Ergo, Congress cannot have acquired and does not have the right to do anything that you don't have the right to do yourself. Two, you can't have a moral obligation to do what you think is wrong. Whenever there's a conflict between what authority commands and your own conscience, you have the right to disobey. But if that's true, then the one giving orders isn't authority, since authority means the one with the right to rule you and the one you must obey. Three, no document or ritual can alter morality and make an evil act good. Either man-made law matches objective morality, in which case the law is redundant and irrelevant, or it conflicts with objective morality, in which case it is illegitimate and should be disobeyed. Either way, legislation never creates any obligation to obey, and therefore has no authority. Once all of this is widely understood, that's the end of most of the theft, thuggery, oppression, and war in the world, which happens now as a result of the belief in government, meaning a rightful ruling class. If evil were committed only by genuinely nasty people, instead of being condoned and committed by almost everyone, all those who imagine that legalizing evil makes it good and imagine that agents of authority have rights the rest of us don't, the world would be a far more peaceful and just place. Amen. Now, if you have more than two minutes to spare and want a thorough explanation of this, then get a copy of The Most Dangerous Superstition. I've gotten a copy of it and I've started reading it. Um, 
I thought he had some very salient points there. Um, so back to... I thought he did too. I like the part about the uh, moral obligation, mm -hmm. you know, to do what's wrong. You know, to do what's wrong? To do what's wrong. Government pushes down these things and they, they know that they're doing wrong. Right, right. And, well, and they feel like they're obligated to a government. Well, they're the government. They're obligated to stand up for these things and risk a little bit of trouble in the office or even the office to stand up for the other people that can't. That's why they're elected to Congress. That's why they're elected as representatives. Well, the, the, the system of getting elected has been so privatized. But back to, back to Mike. Mike. Uh, and, and the fact that why does he need a shop license? And, and they are asking for shop licenses and barber's license to protect people from getting bad haircuts. But the return of, listen, look at it this way. If he didn't, if the people didn't like getting haircuts or his haircuts, they would not give him any business. That's true. They would go somewhere else. Yeah, to get their business. And, and then he said the issue if, if he cut somebody, so he had to have all these gloves. Well, right. they have to protect to make sure that he knows how to cut hair and not cut necks. If he cut a neck, we have a criminal system that he could be charged with a crime. And we don't have to protect everything. Then you were making a point about how before we had the uh, shrink business. Um, oh, when I grew up, my mother, you know, going to the hairdresser with my aunts and stuff was, it was something to go and sneak in there where they were getting their hair done to hear because they told everything to the hairdresser. It was like a shade tree psychologist or something. No one went to therapy. They just went to a good barber shop and men folk went with men folk because they need men folk to have that minute of time to tell the truth with. And yep. so do women. Yep. And it was a it was a place for that, you yep. know. Yeah. So their job carried the shoulders of everybody, not just cleaned up the haircut shoulders. Yeah. So I've been distributing the, uh, the Together platform pamphlets to uh, as many uh, of those beauty shops and barber shops as I can afford to send one out. Each one cost me, oh, a dollar by the time I make it and send it out, not to mention the time. So uh, because that's where, that's where we are, we can connect in community and talk. Uh, a bit, which we need to do a lot of now. An informed community is a community that's going to come together during hard times and share during, you know, good times because mm -hmm. they're informed about it. How do you even know if something's going on if nobody's telling you? And no one, this man, it, Mike is suffering down there at his little barbershop place alone, you know, until this. You know, yep. Yep. So, uh, with lots of other owners doing the same thing. So we're going to get on the ground and see what we can find out in our little community and come back to you on that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I brought a couple of other books that are books that I'm reading a lot right now that I want to share in case uh, uh, in case they're interesting to you. Oh, that's our that's our mascot telling you that Jake came in. So this is a this is a book um, that I'm uh, really enjoying right now. It's called Sol Viva: How to Grow 500,000 on One Acre. Uh, it has designs, simple designs, uh, so that we can be much more food food independent. I've given away a couple copies of this, and it, let's see other books that I'm really uh, that I recommend in case you want to read along with me. Uh, this is the Earth Ship. This person shows you how to build houses that uh, sustain life, have enough growing uh, for your own vegetables year round in this home, and no utility bills, limitless natural resources. Uh, this is a CD set it's called the Source Field Investigations. It's really fascinating material, uh, new science that uh, involves just mind-blowing things. I recommend it highly. <laughs> Let's see. But I have a couple other books we can share another time. This book is from, from the um, Ringing Cedar series. 
coming out of Russia. This is how the people have a back to nature and uh, out from under the thumb of unmoral government approach. And it's a, it's a wonderful series. And I guess that's all I'll share for now. I have a couple more. But uh, I like to read. Some people like to do. Different people learn in different ways. And uh, I enjoy reading a lot. I also brought in. Thank you. I brought in a, a, a bag of seed that I bought. This is a, a bag of organic broccoli sprouting seeds. Uh, you can grow very, very nutritious food, uh, even if you're just doing sprouts, uh, any time of the year, no matter what kind of thing you have in your house, so what kind of you know light you have in your house. So um, I recommend that everybody get a hold of some alfalfa seed and broccoli seed and other sprouting seeds. Um, sprout them. Sprout them. And you can let some of them continue to grow into broccoli at this time. Uh, so, Kathleen, what's for next week, do you think? Oh, well, I think that we're going to investigate some stuff happening in my town, maybe even Putney. Um, and we're going to talk to a man by the name of Frankie. They used to have a pizza place called Frankie's Pizza. We're going to interview him. Mm -hmm. And we're going to interview a young man ma by the name of Nathan, who has yeah. had uh, his own personal encounter with our um, justice system. And so we'll tell you more about that next week. And looking forward to that yeah. on the ground. Yeah. So uh, we want to encourage everyone to uh, talk with each other more, uh, follow your heart, check in with your heart with what's right and what's not, and uh, take strength to do the right thing. And, uh, and, and, if you, and if you see something out there that you feel is unjust or something, take a video of it. Put it on your, your, your phone, you know. Yeah. Uh, visibility and truth is the only policy to have, even if it's not something we want to see. We can deal with it if we can recognize what's going on. Don't stand alone out there because you're not. Yeah. yeah. So we're working on building this show and building the format. Uh, we'd like to involve uh, you at home here in the show as we get it more organized. So. And we'd also like to invite you to uh, bring your pet on. Um, we have a few lined up, but that's only a few. You want to be on our program and share with us your pet, you know, contact us. Yeah, and our thoughts uh, and prayers are with the many, many people who are suffering as a result of militarism and as a result of the uh, militarism against the earth and the environment, the people who have been duped into eating the wrong food and living in the wrong place where there's toxins. And our, our prayers go out to you, and we want to be in solidarity to create a better balance of of honesty and integrity between each other, the planet, and the beings with which we share her. Wow. That sounds really amazing. I'm ready to turn into that. Let's see what we can do, huh? Thank you. Do, 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 da, do, 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 da.